A basic line drawing combined with Photoshop can create a million different results. But in today's video, we're gonna learn a simple yet effective style that can transmit a lot of information and be done in no time. Hi everyone, I'm Oliver and welcome to Upstairs, a platform that talks about architecture representation and visualization. Today's video was inspired by a piece of illustration that I found on a competition board. I'm gonna link that in the video description. I really like this result and this can be done pretty quickly. Uh, we're gonna go over four different steps to achieve this final look. So let's begin. I'm going to start by exporting a simple line drawing from SketchUp, but you could draw these shapes in any 3D software or BIM software or even in a 2D one and then make it isometric in Photoshop. I'm just using SketchUp because I have a bus stop here and it's easier that way. You can choose to work with an image, like a PNG file, or go an extra step using a PDF, like I'm going to show you in just a moment. With a PDF, I can open an Illustrator to change the line thickness of each object and emphasize the bus stop. And then save this file as a .ai file so that we can open linked in Photoshop. And listen up, this step isn't really necessary. The final result won't change that much. You could just jump straight into Photoshop to begin stylizing these simple lines. So let's go to Photoshop now. Create a new file and then I'm going to go to File and Place Linked to bring in the lines. Let's begin with the shapes. The first step is to use the magic wand and the street profile layer to make these quick selections. Make sure that your magic wand is set to add up there and then create a new layer and fill the selection with the desired color. I'm starting with grass. Quick and easy, right? Now repeat the steps for each selection, creating new layers for each new category. Sidewalk, road, bike path, and so on. Now we don't need the lines showing on all of the diagram. Let's use the polygonal lasso tool to create a quick selection around the bus stop and then create a mask on the street profile layer. Okay, then it's time to add details to these plain shapes. Create a new layer above the grass layer and then hit the shortcut Ctrl-Alt-G to clip this new layer to the one beneath it. So now everything we draw over this new layer will only show where the grass is. And using the brush tool, I'm going to select a watercolor brush to create contrast and details. By the way, I'm going to leave a few links in the video description and I'm going to try to find a few free brushes for you to download. And then now it's a matter of making it look interesting and well balanced. Play with the brush opacity and size, and then use some splatter brushes to create other types of details. And even dust particles can look nice in this composition. Don't worry if it's too strong, you can then change the layer blend mode to soft light, for example, to make the blacks turn into a darker version of the screen that we chose for the grass. We're aiming for a subtle effect. There are many more elements to come and we don't want to overdo on this first move, alright? I'm going to repeat the step for each one of these layers, but the key thing here is to create them one by one and not all at the same time and try to make the effect a bit different so that we have more contrast between the shapes. And you don't have to limit yourself to one layer clipped only. You can use one to add watercolor effects and another one to add sketch lines as some fine details. I think what makes this image special is the, the combination of different types of style, texture and colors. Everything is soft and subtle, but it creates an interesting composition in the end. Thank you. 
and not all shapes have to have the exact same approach. For the sidewalk, I'm just going to add a bit of noise. You can select the layer and go up there to filter, noise and add noise. A subtle 3% should be good enough. Okay, then the base is pretty much ready. Let's take care of the bus stop now. And keep in mind that these steps can be adapted to any type of urban furniture or project. Try to take the workflow out of this video and not be limited to one result only, alright? So I'm going to add an adjustment layer on top of this bus stop layer to add a bit of color so that it pops up a bit more. If you cannot see this tab, you can go to Window, Adjustments. And then, with the Street Profile layer selected, click on the Hue and Saturation. Also clip it below, either using the shortcut Ctrl, Alt, G, or clicking on this icon here. Check Colorize, you won't see any difference just yet, you need to increase the lightness, then you can change the hue and saturation. And for this one, I'm going for a desaturated blue. Good, next step is people, people cutouts. For this diagram, I'm going to maintain the collage slash diagrammatic style and use the collage cutout pack that we have created. 50 high quality image files with no background, it's pretty easy to use and it's, it also comes with an illustrator file so that you can edit the shapes yourself if you feel like it. I'm going to select a bunch of them and drag into Photoshop all at the same time. Then select all of these new layers and hit Ctrl T to bring up the transformation box. I'm going to resize them all at the same time to maintain the height differences between them, but also because it's quicker that way. Now that I know they are up to scale, I can distribute them around. And listen up, it's important to place them with intention, to have sort of a story behind each cutout. Use their activity right. For example, uh, the people walking across the street can indicate movement, these guys going out of the bus stop with the luggage, and that sort of thing, got it? And look, place them in a group so that it's easier to handle and our file stays organized. But then it's also easier to add effects. I'm going to add to them a hue and saturation adjustment layer that we added to the street profile layer to make them blue. The colorize option allows us to maintain the details, but just make them monochromatic towards the color we choose. Since these people are part of this composition, uh, this way we make our final result a bit better instead of just using silhouettes. Uh, it's not that one is better than the other, it's just different uses for different occasions, okay? Next up, vehicles. You can export cars and buses from the 3D software, or you could use isometric drawings like this one. There are many ways to make these, uh, you can draw them yourself and with time you compose your own library, or you could get the isometric urban pack that we have created. There are loads of things there, all the way from 3D, vector files to ready to use images. I'm now going to explain everything that is inside this amazing pack here, but be sure to check the links in the video description to know all the content from each of these packs, uh, they do help a lot during the process and save you a ton of time. By the way, we are receiving such a positive feedback over these specs, and we'd love to know suggestions for future ones. We do also plan to increase our free library, there are already a few things there, so please let us know in the comments below. Alright, so now, moving on, let's talk about the trees. Let's, I think let's mix up the style a bit more. I'm going to choose a realistic type now, but instead of using the actual PNG image, you can open up in a new file and go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. It's now a brush and we can click once on the image to get a monochromatic look 
instead of the realistic one. It's sort of similar to what we did with the pivot with the hue and saturation adjustment layer. But this time we're using the brush, which allows us to move more quickly. Now hear me out. For this to look good, you gotta make sure to alternate the brush opacity between clicks and also use more than one tree. You've got to avoid repetition, okay? This image would also look amazing with the trees from the isometric urban pack, but I'm showing you that there are many ways to achieve a great result. Now pay attention that if you're using a PNG image from a realistic tree, most likely you will have flat bottoms. So use an eraser to round the edges. That way the angle looks a bit more correct. And then, to finish up this image, an outer stroke on the bus stop. You know how big of a fan I am of different line thicknesses, right? I mean, you could jump back on Illustrator and create this thicker line there, and since the files are linked, it would automatically sync up here in Photoshop. Or if you want to be lazy, you can do this just straight in Photoshop, just grab a brush, make sure to have it at 100% opacity and also 100% hardness, and hold shift between clicks to connect the dots with straight lines. Well, there's actually one more thing before getting this image done. Even though there's no shadows in this image, which was what I wanted, I'm going to create a shadow on the bottom of this bus stop to show that the platform is a bit elevated from the floor. And that's it guys, uh, this is the final result. A straightforward video but full of interesting tips and tricks. I hope you learned something and make sure to give it a like if you did so. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to not miss out on future content. Don't forget that all the links are in the video description and if you've got any questions, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!